My name is Dale Ward, I'm a comedian and an artist, and I wrote a thesis about how Michael Myers from the Halloween movies is a Zen master. I called it Zen and the Art of Halloween, an analysis of Zen master Michael Myers. This video is chapter one of my thesis, and these are some of my Halloween paintings that will be appearing in the background. So let's get into chapter one, which is titled The Shape of Silence. My first proof of Michael Myers being a Zen master is that he has mastered silence. In Buddhism, many monks, masters, sages, and gurus take a vow of silence to not speak for a period of time. And Michael Myers hasn't said anything in years. This was made abundantly clear in 1978 when Michael's psychiatrist, Dr. Sam Loomis, told Nurse Marion, quote, He hasn't spoken a word in 15 years. Such behavior signifies a high level of mastery and dedication, because a vow of silence usually only lasts for a few days, weeks, or months at most, and is sometimes limited to certain times of day or even specific areas. Rarely does a vow of silence mean complete and total abstinence from speech, let alone for such long periods of time. But Michael's silence is absolute and not limited to any time or location. It is ubiquitous, omnipresent, and eternal. Furthermore, in the 6th century BCE, there lived a man named Siddhartha Gautama, who would come to be known as the Buddha. And when the Buddha was asked certain questions, he employed what is called noble silence. And in a comparable way, Michael Myers employs a similar silence. The difference is that Michael doesn't answer certain questions with silence. He answers all questions with silence. In fact, you don't even have to ask him a question and his answer is always silence. This thunderous silence is very zen-like, because sometimes the answer to a question is beyond words, and therefore the perfect answer is silence. As Zen master Dogen Zenji said, quote, do not speak if it brings no benefit, end quote. However, Michael's proficiency in silence goes far beyond his lack of speech and communication, because he is also totally silent with his physical movements as well. Michael Myers is so quiet when he moves, most people can't even sense when he's approaching, until it's too late. For example, several times on Halloween in 1978, Michael stalked Laurie Strode, Annie Brackett, Linda Vanderklok, and Bob Sims without any of them ever hearing a sound. Myers could be following you for hours and you would never know it because he has truly mastered silence in every way to such a degree that Michael Myers is the shape of silence. In fact, Michael's mastery of silence is so thorough that it goes even further than the lack of sound in his speech and physical body, because Michael Myers is silent on the inside as well. This is also very Zen-like, because in Zen, true silence is beyond absolute quietude and the absence of physical sound. It's an inner and outer, all-encompassing, natural void. And Michael Myers is truly a complete void of emptiness in every way. But I will further explain this voidness in a later chapter, because it is extremely important in Zen. My point is that this crucial silence is not just a cessation of external sound, it's also a cessation of internal noise, including the cessation of all desires for silence as well. 
This is part of the reason why one of the four noble truths of Buddhism is represented by the Sanskrit word niroda, which means cessation. I will talk about the four noble truths later, but it's clear that Michael Myers has ceased all sounds and all desires in himself and in anyone who crosses his path. In this way, Myers helps everyone enter into ceaseless silence, because Michael Myers is the shape of cessation. According to Zen monk Thich Nhat Hanh, the aforementioned noble silence refers to the silencing and the unification of three aspects of being, namely speech, body, and mind. And it's obvious that Michael Myers has totally unified all three aspects of his being with pure silence. Moreover, when one has sustained such silence, supreme stillness comes with it. And Michael is clearly also a master of stillness. When Myers was in captivity at the Smith's Grove Sanitarium, he was so entranced in his stillness and dark silence that most people underestimated him by thinking that he was catatonic. But Michael showed that he was far from catatonia when he escaped and attacked. It was simply that he had mastered silence and the subsequent stillness beyond any other master. In fact, Myers can be so still that you will never notice him watching you. He could be standing right behind you or just outside your window and you would never know it because he has truly mastered silent stillness. In this regard, Michael Myers is the shape of stillness. All that being said, simply being silent and still is not the totality of Zen, because even a statue of Buddha is perfectly still and silent, but it is not an actual Buddha. A real Buddha is a person who is awake, and is also alive. And Michael Myers is very alive. In fact, he can't seem to die. But again, I will talk more in depth about that later. Zen essentially begins when one is silent, still, and conscious because such a state invites calmness into the mind and body. With that in mind, it's clear that Michael Myers is always calm. He never gets perturbed, upset, stressed, or even remotely worked up. Even when he's chasing someone or being shot, he stays totally calm because Michael Myers is the shape of calm. Tranquility is key in Zen, because when one's mind and body are truly silent, still, calm, and in the present moment, the resulting quiet equanimity heightens awareness and enhances senses. Therefore, maybe Michael's mastery of quiet calmness is one of the reasons why he has enhanced physical capabilities, to the point where he seems to be supernaturally strong for his size and stature. An example of this strength was when Michael lifted Bob a foot off the ground and held him there with one hand. Or when he picked up his sister's tombstone and moved it entirely by himself in complete silence. This shows that Michael Myers is truly the strong silent type, which I think is a result of him being quiet on the outside and the inside. In this respect, Michael Myers is the shape of equanimity. Another valuable reason for practicing silence is that when you are loud, either externally or internally, it's hard to hear anything but yourself. In other words, only in a state of pure quietude can you truly listen to something or someone other than yourself. Which means that Michael Myers truly listens to you. This is a powerful lesson from Michael, because a good listener is rare and extremely valuable. And the world would be a better place if more people practiced listening like Michael Myers. On top of that, listening is very essential to Zen and enlightenment. Who knows, maybe if you quietly listen on Halloween night, you might even hear Michael Myers breathing in the darkness. 
The consequence of this, however, is that the last sound you will ever hear is the only sound Michael Myers ever makes. That steady, ominous breathing. I will go into more detail about that in the next chapter. Yet another precious lesson of peaceful Zen quietude is that people who take a vow of silence or practice silent meditation often find that not using words for a lengthy period of time results in thinking without words as well. In other words, one's thoughts are no longer tied into human constraints called words, and therefore the thoughts are more abstract yet far more accurate but literally indescribable, because they are beyond words. And Michael Myers resides in that abstract place beyond words. He lives in the silent place, because Michael Myers is the shape of ambiguity. In every way, Michael Myers is truly the personification of silence. But the silence has transcended his physical and mental existence. Meaning that he has become the embodiment of silence, to the point where he is not only silent in his body and his mind, Michael Myers is silent in our minds as well. In other words, he has become a totally indescribable metaphysical shape in our reality and in our nightmares. Michael Myers is nameless, formless fear. He is pure, dark silence. And the silent, wordless result of his distinct ambiguity has ironically created a much more accurate description of what he truly is. Michael Myers is the shape of the boogeyman. In summary, his command of silence helps prove that Michael Myers is a Zen master, because in Buddhism, overall silence, stillness, calmness, and wordless equanimity are key steps towards the state of samadhi, which is a Sanskrit word meaning meditative consciousness, and is also a good segue to my next chapter. Okay, ghosts and goblins, that was my first draft of chapter one of Zen and the Art of Halloween. Stick around to the end of this video to see my bloopers because they are honestly the best part. But first, hit that subscribe button to follow me the way Michael Myers followed Laurie Strode. And if you enjoyed this video, please attack the like button the way the shape attacked Lori. Be sure to check out the other chapters to put this one in context, and please comment below to let me know what you liked, or tell me everything you hated and what you want the boogeyman to do to me as punishment. Also, please comment any corrections you have if you think I made a mistake, or if you have any suggestions or additions, I'd love to hear them. Also, also, let me know if you'd like to see me perform a one hour version of this thesis live, or if you think I should publish it as a book, or if you want me to burn it with fire and never speak of it again, leave a comment! I truly appreciate every single like, share, comment, and subscription, and I will respond to all of the comments. One last thing, if you could please share this with anyone you know who's a fan of Halloween, Zen, art, or comedy, and especially if you know anyone who's a fan of all four, please share this with them. Thank you for watching, happy Halloween, and now enjoy my bloopers! My first proof of Michael Myers being a Zen master is that he has mastered Satan. Such such behavior. <laughs> such behavior. <laughs> rarely does a rarely does a vow of silence usually was asked certain questions, he... He employed what is called Furthermore, It's very zen-like because... For example, For example, When one has sustained such silence, supreme stillness comes with it. Sustained such silence, supreme stillness comes with it. <laughs> supreme stillness comes with it. <laughs> and Michael Myers. <laughs>
He always stays completely calm. <laughs> completely calm. <laughs> because Michael Myers is the shape of calm. He all <laughs> The resulting quiet equanimity heightens awareness and enhances senses. <laughs> Therefore, maybe <laughs> Michael Myers is truly the strong silent type. Ooh, dreamy. Michael Myers truly listens to you. Michael Myers truly listens to you. The world would be a better place if more people practice listening like Michael Myers. <laughs> this is a world- what? <laughs> this is a world- what? And therefore, the thoughts are more- <laughs> In other words, oh, ha.